Hello students. Today we are going to discuss about one of the very important aspect of any computer organization or any computer architecture. We are going to discuss about computer instructions. Now before we start our discussion, we must know what are the different elements that our computer is made of. Now as you know our computer means our CPU and some peripheral devices like some input output devices or our memory and how they interact with each other is the basic study of any computer organization or any architecture. Now a CPU is made of three things. One is ALU, another one is CU and the last one is register. Now ALU or the arithmetic and logic unit is responsible for doing all sort of arithmetical as well as logical operation in any computer. Whereas the CU or the control unit is responsible for controlling different parts of the computer. It is basically used to issue some signals to the different devices. It is also responsible for controlling the internal elements of any CPU and register is a very small memory unit that is responsible for holding different instructions as well as data that our CPU is currently working on. Now to interact with other devices like external storage devices as you know hard disk, CD-ROM, pen drive and input devices like keyboard, uh, mouse and output devices like printer or our video we use some buses called control bus, data bus and address bus. These buses are used to communicate between our CPU and other devices. Now we are going to discuss how any computer instruction works. Now here I am showing you two very basic computer instruction. One is A equals to B plus C another one is A equals to B minus C where A, B and C are operand and this equals to symbol and this plus symbol is operator. Now this A, B, C can be some registers or maybe some memory unit. Or some memory location. In any case or in any operation it may be addition, subtraction, multiplication or division. The basic format is destination equals to source 1 operator source 2. Like in this very first example destination is A, B is source 1 operation or operator is plus and source 2 is C. Now in any computer to do this sort of instruction execution we need a specific computer instruction format. This is a very typical computer instruction format where we can have three things S1, S2 and destination where S1 works as source 1, 
H2 works as source 2 and destination is this destination. Now on any instruction you will do some operations. It may be plus, may be minus, may be multiplication, may be division or any mathematical or logical operation. Now for any operation you need some operators. So we are specifying op code that means operation code here. Now after execution of any particular instruction we must go to next instruction. That means after completion of this a equals to b plus c instruction the computer may go to its next instruction location. So we have another thing to store in our computer instruction that is next instruction address. Now we are going to discuss about how our memory or RAM is organized. From this diagram we can easily understand that this particular RAM has 4096 number of locations that you can uh, assume this RAM as a table also where you have 4096 number of rows available and in each rows or in each location it has 16 bits. So you can assume it like a 4690 rows and in each row you have 16 bits. So anything we can store within this RAM can hold maximum 16 bits. That means in any row you can store up to 16 bits. If we apply binary operation 2 to the power n equals to 4096 then n equals to 12. So in this configuration we need 12 bits address for locating any location. So that means if we have 12 bits to locate then we can locate any location in this RAM. If 12 bits are required to locate any address in this RAM then we must have 12 bit address bus because as we learned before that this CPU has three buses, one is address bus, another one is data bus and control bus. Now this address bus is responsible for holding any memory location. Now we also need 16 bit data bus because in each location we can read or write 16 bits. Now in this configuration we also have a data bus. This data bus is responsible for holding any value that is currently address bus is locating. Now this control bus is used to instruct whether we are going to do read operation or write operation. Now from this basic conception we can now calculate that if we have some instruction in this format a equals to b plus c or a equals to b minus c then if this computer has total 16 operators or operation available then 4 bits are required that means 2 to the power 4 equals to 16 4 bits are required as opcode. Now, for locating any location in the memory we need 12 bits so source 1, source 2, destination and next instruction address each of every field will have 12 bits. So we need total 52 bits for locating any location or executing any instruction. Now, we are introducing a special register called accumulator or AC. It is a very special register that we will use to hold 
both source and destination address. Now, if we have any instruction in this format a equals to a plus b or b equals to b minus c, as you can see, this a is present at the left side of the expression as well as at the right side of the expression. That means here the source 1 and this destination both are same. And in this example also the source 1 and the destination is same. Now this accumulator or AC register will work as source 1 or you can say as source 2. So, in our previous example where we had S1, S2 and destination, we are replacing this S2 and this destination, we are keeping only one source. So, this instruction format will become like that accumulator equals to accumulator plus or minus or any operation with the source or source 1. Now, we are introducing another special purpose register that is called PC or program counter that will hold next instruction address. So, we are also getting free of these 12 bits. So, our new instruction will become like this opcode and source address. Okay. Now, if we have some architecture like this, then our computer will become like this, a 4096 into 16 RAM with one accumulator and our instruction will become like this, 16 bit instruction 0 to 15, where 12 to 15, 4 bits are allocated for opcode where 0 to 11 12 bits are allocated for address. Now I am coming to this binary operand. Before we understand this binary operand, we are going to discuss how any computer program is made of. Any computer program is made of two things. One is instruction and the one is called data or operand. Now whenever any program resides within RAM, computer divides these two parts. Instruction will remain in one part and operand or data will remain on another part. Now this thing will be very clear to you once we take an example. Now here you can see we have a very basic C or C++ or Java instruction where we have taken three variables A, B and C and we declared its data type as int. So, once you declared like this in any computer program, the compiler will assign three addresses or three memory location in data part. So, this will be free or empty spaces A, B and C, three empty spaces uh, in our RAM. Now, we have wrote three more instruction a equals to 10, b equals to 20 and c equals to a plus b. These three are instructions. So, we wrote in our instruction part. Now, once the computer execute this first instruction a equals to 10, then this 10 value will come to the empty space allocated for a. Now on the second instruction, when b equals to 20 gets executed, then this 20 value will come to the second instruction location that means in b. And when this c is equal to a plus b will get executed, then the value of c that means 10 plus uh, 20 will come to this empty location. So for this architecture, our instruction will have total 16 bits information where our binary operand, binary operand means these variables will have 16 bit operation, 16 bits information also. Hopefully this concept is very clear to you.
थैंक यू